السلام عليكم ورحمة الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلاق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين صلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآله محمد اللهم كن لبليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها قبيلا الله صل على محمد عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بخنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبغي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر الأحد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين ورحمة الله وبركاته سلام اللهم صل على محمد آل محمد محرم arrived one more time and with the arrival of محرم the mood and the heart of the Mu'maneen and the believers and the lovers of Ashura changes. There is something in Muharram that changes the life of those who have some knowledge about it. There is a secret in Muharram that we all need to ponder on it and try to discover it. I extend my appreciation and thanks and my gratitude to Allah, Lord of the world, who gave me the opportunity and the bounty of being able to stand here tonight before such a respectful audience in such a sacred time and place and speak about such a noble topic, Ashura and Karbala. I'm asked to speak in English and uh, my time is very limited and my capabilities are even more limited. The content, content of the, the, the speech is determined by the time which is Karbala and Ashura and that is a very complex and huge topic. Many, many dimensions and facets are in this topic and it's really hard to uh, do justice when you are limited in time and your capability. I'll try my best to be brief and I ask your prayer and your attendance and your patience to help with it to get some achievement. We all have this uh, experience of losing a loved one, one way or another. Some of us has lost their parents, some other has lost their siblings or their spouses or their children. One way or another we have had this experience of losing a loved one. And we all know that when that happens to us, no matter how close and how dear those diseased individuals are to us, after a period of time, we gradually lose that feeling of loss. And gradually, by the time, it becomes a normal thing. 
third night, the seventh night, and the fortieth night, we do something, and then the anniversary comes, we do something, and then we don't do anything, usually to the next year, and after a couple of years, usually, no matter how dear that person was to you, you will gradually forget. And even with those times, you really don't have that type of feeling that you wanted to cry, you wanted to weep, and you wanted to really commemorate that event of loss of your dear ones. But an incident 1400 years ago in a very remote area in the middle of desert happened, took about half a day or so, and a limited number of people were massacred, and that has nothing to do with us by race or language or whatever, the familiarity of or kinship, nothing. But after 1400 years, every year when the Muharram comes in, you feel different. And your heart tells you to do something more. Now it is Muharram, it is Ashura. And as we get closer to the day of Ashura, that heat and emotion escalates. What is the secret behind this phenomenon? The topic of my speech is the uniqueness of Ashura. And I hope to look at it from a different perspective. First of all, I should tell you that whatever I deliver in these speeches are from myself and all the responsibility of it is on myself. It's not taken from any other sources and after many, many years of studying history of Islam and Quran and uh, narrations and ahadith, we have, have come to some conclusion and I, uh, it's always open to discussion and questions. Okay. And the responsibility of it is all totally by myself. One assumption that I have and that was, is going to be the basis of my series of speeches is that we all are lovers of Ashura and Karbala, and we are all believers of the school of thought of Ahlul Bayt. We are here with that basis, and there is something that comes with it, and that is the feeling of responsibility and the duty and obligation for all of us to spread the word to as many people as we can. Being a lover of Ashura and Imam Hussein, and being a follower of Ahlul Bayt mandates us to be active in spreading their word and conveying the message of Ashura and the school of thought of Ahlul Bayt. The question though is, have we ever been able to do this and accomplish this task satisfactory enough? Have we done our part or not? Do we think that whatever we have done is the perfect way of doing it or there is a way to improve it? And is there any way that we can improve the efficiency of our work toward spreading the word of Ahlul Bayt and conveying the message of Ashura? There is an issue with the way that we see Ashura. You, you surf the net, internet, you will find thousands of entries, people from all walks of life, in different places in the world, with different ideologies and religion, talk about the event of Karbala and Ashura. But you will learn that they are not all on the same page. They do not look at the event the same way. And most importantly, they do not 
in, for the most part, they do not look at the Ashura and Karbala the way that we look at it. When we, the, the Shia people, are getting together to commemorate Ashura, usually, traditionally, we start with the notion of, we refer to some of the traditions and hadith that has been received, that there was things in the, the whole creation way before the incident of Karbala even took place. There are narrations for us that at the time of the creation of Adam, when he was repelled from the, the heaven and kicked out of it, he was trying to repent and go back. And he was instructed to seek intercession of the Panjtan, the five uh, individuals of Ahlul Bil Ali had And then it's narrated that when he came to the name of Imam Muslim, he felt different. And he asked, what was the reason that I feel different about this particular name? And then uh, Jebrail, <coughs> Archangel Gabriel, started to explain to him and tell him the story of Karbala way before Imam Hussein even was born. Narrations like this are multiple, more than one or two. We have things that uh, connect the issue of Ashura with Ibrahim and Ishmael and the Qadainon with Bezeb and Azim. Also, we have things uh, Zakaria and Yahya. Many of them have somehow been associated or referred to the issue of Ashura even before Muhammad was born. We get closer to the time of Imam Ali salam when he's coming back from Safin in the place of Nainabal uh, or Karbala. He uh, stops right there, pauses and talks about what is going to happen in this area and he, he weeps and he prays. And this is narrated authentically in the, in the history. It is a real history of Islam. Then we have things from Umm Salame. You know Umm Salame is one of the most uh, uh, honorable persons of the, 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 the early Islam. And she has fought Mavi and uh, sent her him letters and stuff. It's, it's, it's amazing what she has been. Then, interestingly enough, when Imam Hussein was leaving Madinah toward Mecca, he left uh, the uh, articles of Imam uh, as a, he, she was a trustee of Imam Hussein, and he left the articles of Imam with her. <coughs> and you know, every Imam has that and co convey that to the next Imam and told her that whoever comes after me and asks for a, this is a secret between me and you, that, that one will be the Imam after me, which happened to be one of them all the time. This lady wakes up some, one night and tells others that I saw Holy Prophet in my dream. He was very saddened and he was uh, weeping and he was uh, uh, covered with dust. And there, and he was, he told me, I asked him, what is the deal with you? He said that I am coming back from burial of my son, Hussein. And also she says that Holy Prophet <laughs> left a jar of dust and uh, soil of uh, Karbala with me and told me, whenever this turns red, the blood red, you know that Imam Hussein has been massacred. And that what happened. <laughs> All of these and many other narrations Tell us one thing, that there is something special about Karbala that no other incident in the history of mankind, or as much as we know, has been appointed that way and has been treated that way. This cosmological perspective, of course, we believe it wholeheartedly. As long as the narrations are authentic, we don't have any argument against it and we believe in it. However, this language and this system of talking about Karbala and Ashura is only 
good among the Muslims who are believers of Ahlul Bayt and lovers of Imam Hussein. If. So once you step out of this circle, you will have difficulty with proving any, in, in anything about Ashura and Karbala and def defending anything from that event with this type of rationalism. Because there is no reason for them to agree with you on that. If we are the lovers of al Bayt and we are obligated to spread their word and be functional in the way of conveying their message, how are we going to do that to the people outside of the circle of the Shia followers? It seems that we are struggling with a huge uh, challenge. We need to seek a better language that by which we can communicate the happenings in Ashura and Karbala with others who do not believe and have not submitted to Ahlul Bayt school of thought and to the uh, being a Shia. That is what I'm trying to uh, get closer at least in some extent with the limited time that we have and the very, uh, so many aspects of the issue that we have to discuss. The thing that is in common between us and the people outside of the circle of Shia is logic, wisdom, and the rational that people are used to use for, for daily, daily activities. So we need to borrow logics of daily activity to explain the supernatural phenomenon. What is that makes Ashura different from other incidents? We need to find a way of explanation. On the other hand, we see that in the history, Holy Prophet and all the Imams with no exception from Imam Ali, all the way to the Imam Mahdi Sharif, they all have invested in the concept of Ashura, with no exception. They all have invited to commemorate the incident even before that incident happens. I unfortunately don't have enough time to give you examples of what Holy Prophet said, what Imam Ali said, and uh, Imam Hassan said, and everybody else. And then, uh, of course, after them, every single Imam has opened a big chapter on commemoration of Ashura. What is the deal, and what is the reason, and what is the wisdom behind all that much of investment in Ashura? We know there have been many other battles in Islam. And many other, almost every, every all the other, uh, all the other imams were, 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 were murdered one way or another. There is nothing similar to what is about Ashura, about any of other incidents. And the question is why? What is the deal about Ashura? And how can we make sense out of this phenomenon? The question is what makes Ashura unique and exceptional and different? Oftentimes I've heard people bringing different reasonings, which in, a, in an extent might be acceptable but doesn't satisfy you. Some of us would say the reason that the Ashura incident became such a unique an exceptional event was that the brutality, the unfairness, and the severity of what happened in that day was really high, which is true. No, no, no doubt about that. However, 
Those who do not believe or are not in love with Ashura may challenge you. And when they browse the history of mankind, the history of Arabs, the history of Iranians, Afghans, uh, uh, Christians, uh, uh, Anglo-Saxons, you name it, throughout the history you will find mm, enormous amounts of information, data, and fa factual history that portrays how brutal they have been. At least in the event of Karbala, we know that there were two group of armed fighters fighting in a battlefield. But we have had so many incidents of hundreds or thousands of innocent civilians, elderly, women, children, being massacred for a long period of time and being raped and being God knows how badly tortured. And yet, Ashura stands out. That is hard to buy that what makes Ashura unique is the level of brutality and the level of unfairness. I personally believe the unfairness that went against Imam Hassan salam was not less than unfairness that went against Imam Hussein. Think about the peace treaty with Muawiyah, and then what he did to Imam, Hussein, Imam Hassan versus the upraise of Imam Hussein against Yazid, and then what Yazid did. The unfairness, I think, in Imam Hassan's case is huge. And with Imam Ali is even more than that. So it's hard to buy this argument that what makes Karbala unique is the level of unfairness, level of brutality, and stuff like that. Some other says, no, it might not be the case, but there is other things that you, you could be the reason for uniqueness of Ashura, and that is, look who is in this side of the battle who is being treated unfairly and being killed. The best people on the face of the earth, 100%, hands down, accepted. However, if you look at the history, you will see many other incidents that on the so one side of the battle are the best of the best of the, on the face of the earth being treated unfairly and brutally by an, their enemy. That is hard to accept that this reasoning has any merit to show why the event of Karbala is unique and exceptional. Some other people said, look at the immediate consequence of that event. Probably that is what makes it unique. Again, hard to buy that. If you compare with other events in the history of Islam, even after Karbala or prior to Karbala, it's hard to say that this is the reason for Karbala and Ashura being unique. It's very hard to prove it that way. For somebody who is not in love with their Ahlul Bayt or, or try to be rational and tries to be critical of what you say. And the short term, short -term consequence on their... I've heard many times people said uh, if it was not for Ashura, the governments were not corrected. Wrong. The history didn't prove that, didn't support that. As a matter of fact, after Ashura, the condition became worse and worse and worse. There have been never days better than the Ashura for many, many years, for actually centuries. After the, the, the three years that Yazid was is still in power after that day of Ashura, he did much worse things than, than before. Because as, as a matter of fact, he didn't even have a chance to do anything at the time of almost in anyways. I mean, immediately before he even come to the crowd, uh, uh, seat uh, to be a ruler, I want to say, upraised. I want to say who, who, waste, uh, who, who waited 10 years with Moabiyah, which was much, much, much worse than Yazid. I can prove that with many, many incidents of the, the, the facts of the history 
Muhammad Hussein didn't fight with Muawiyah. He was in power and did a lot of wrong things. But then, at the time of Yazid, before even he, he has a chance to do anything, Muhammad Hussein upraised. There is a lot more into it. It's not just a simple simplification of things that, okay, Yazid, yes, after, after Ashura, Yazid found more opportunities to do worse. And then after him, did anything get any better? Bani Marwan, were, were they any better than Bani, uh, Bani Umayyad? No. The history is very clear about that. What about after Bani Marwan? Did, did things any, get any better? In the, in the time of Bani Abbas, who claimed to be protective of Ahlul Bayt, did they do anything any better toward the, the real Ahlul Bayt? The history is very clear on that. So even the short-term consequences of aftermath of Karbala is not a reason acceptable for somebody with a critical minding that is the, the reason why the Karbala is unique. So we should look into some other answers and try to find a better way of rationalization of what makes Karbala unique. Yes, Karbala is a unique event. There is no second to it. But let's think in more depth manner and find better ways of defending Karbala, defending the message of Ashura and trying to learn and then spread the word. My time is up. I will have to stop right here. Inshallah, we will continue a little bit more next visit with you. And hopefully, we will discover some wisdom behind what all the prophets before Holy Prophet, and then Holy Prophet, and all the Imams before Imam Hussein, and all the Imams after Imam Hussein did about the incident of Ashura. And all that investment really paid off. Today, almost every spot on the face of the earth, in the time of Ashura, you will find people commemorating this event. Only 70 some Fighters, in a matter of half a day, were all massacred. And it has to be forgotten even the next month. <laughs> with no internet, with no propaganda, with no news, news letter, with no tribune, with nothing. It should have been diminished from the face of the memories the first couple of months. 1400 years Every year it becomes more vibrant, more colorful, more alive. What is the secret behind this? <coughs> May Allah help us to learn more about what al Bayt have done for us. And inshallah, accept this little from us. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum.